Happy Feast of St. Bridget. So St. Bridget is one of the patronesses of Europe, along with St. Edith Stein, uh, St. Catherine of Siena. Uh, these women saints who are lifted up by the church as great role, role models of holiness for us. St. Bridget was um, born in 1303 in Sweden. She had eight children after the death of her husband. She she engaged in a, a more ascetic life. In other words, she she picked up more prayer, more fasting. She restrained herself from worldly pleasures to 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 really seek the the, the joy of the Lord in prayer and and in alms giving. Eventually, anyway, she ended up in Rome and she founded an order of the Brigitines. And her life is a real witness about how God could lead us in very different ways and in different parts of our life at different moments. Um, and uh, the future is really a surprise, you could say, to all of us. Um, and it's a real adventure to follow the Lord. But anyway, the first reading for for the feast uh, is really <laughs> at the heart of, of the doctrine of what it means to, to be a Christian. There was a great French movement of spirituality, I believe, in and around the 17th century that that really pushed to remind the church at the time that our Christianity is not just mere imitation of Christ, that to be a Christian is to be one with Jesus. And in the first reading for the Feast of St. Bridget, we see this, that, that St. Paul talks about the life of Christ in him the life of Christ in us, that at baptism, we were crucified with Jesus in a sense that we mystically participated in the passion of Jesus at baptism and that we were brought from the passion into the resurrection and the Holy Spirit united us to Jesus very deeply. And this, we could never forget about this central truth of our Christianity because this is what it means to be a Christian. It means that Jesus has given us his life, that we are one with him. And this oneness with Jesus is not a metaphor. It's not a nice way of speaking spiritually. It is a reality that our oneness, our communion with Christ in baptism is the beginning of a life that is meant to grow more and more and more, that we are meant to inherit more and more of our life in Jesus and therefore become more and more one with God. And so this life of, of holiness began in baptism and uh, it is the whole, could, you could say it's the whole program of spirituality, of, of the ascetical life. In other words, the practice of prayer and penance and mortifications. In other words, those things we renounce out of love and it involves suffering by renouncing certain desires, but giving that to Jesus out of love intensifies the love in our hearts for God and for Christ. And when that happens, we are grafted more and more into Jesus. And so St. Bridget is this great witness that she she learned how to restrain her her disordered desires. And she even learned how to to redirect desires and enjoyments of good things as well. Uh, so so mortification and renouncing things and not only just renouncing what is bad but even renouncing good things for the sake of Christ, for to show your love for Christ. So that's what religious do, like, like myself. We've renounced the, the beauty and good of, of, of human sexuality and marriage as a sacrifice to say to God, I, I want to give you everything and give that deepest part of my being to you um, as, a, as love um, and, and, and as a witness that you are enough, God, that you are enough, that your love and your grace is enough. And so St. Bridget, this is at the heart of her spirituality, we could say. And she, that's why she, she had many mystical experiences, especially about the passion of Jesus. And the passion of Jesus, at some point in all our lives, we, we come into contact with this mystery in an ever deeper way, where we come to participate maybe through the sufferings or the trials in our life, uh, because Jesus leads us through the cross to resurrection, to glory. And so... This is how this life of Christ in us starts to grow. Blessed Columba Marmion, um, you probably often hear me speaking about him, but when I read his book, Christ, the Life of the Soul, it changed my whole spiritual outlook when I was a novice, a Dominican novice. And it's just, he says, Christ is the life of the soul of the baptized. That Jesus is living in us, that he can speak through us, that, 
that he, he wants to work through us, that he's alive in us. He's actually alive in us. This is, is, is a, this is what it means to be the church. The church is the spiritual, mystical organism of Jesus living on earth, but through his members, us. And so the more we are obedient to Christ, the more we faithful to divine inspirations through the Holy Spirit, the more Jesus will be able to live in us. As St. Teresa of Avila says, Jesus has no hands on earth but yours, no, no mouth on earth, on earth but yours, no eyes but yours. And so he's mystically connected to each of us. We, we, are, we are one large, large Jesus. The church is one large Jesus. It's Jesus and his church are one. And so this mystical union. So all of us are called to be mystics, which simply means that we're called to myth, mystically participate in the life of Jesus. And it is especially obedience and, and our daily sufferings that united to him, that transform us more and more into him. And when that happens, we will receive more and more of light in our soul from God. Bless you.